everyone welcome back to GK today i am mujhe sana and in this video we'll cover the current affairs before we move ahead let me inform you that these questions are part of our daily 20 mcq series 2022 in the gk today's android application so if you are looking for the text version of these questions and their explanations along with the interactive quiz you may consider joining our daily 20 mcq series in the gk today android application in this course in app you get daily 20 mcqs a fortnightly quiz a monthly revision document and also category wise revision ebooks that are optimized for reading on mobile you are also able to access all archives of questions from january 2020 onwards and let me tell you one more thing if you want the hindi version of this session you can refer to our former channel named as gk today the link has been given in the description box from where you can reach to so without taking much of your time let's get started good morning everyone welcome back to gk today and today we'll be discussing most important mcqs for 20th and 21st of march 2022 starting with very first question which institution released the directions of regulatory framework for microfinance loans so the reserve bank of india has released the rbi regulatory framework for microfinance loans directions 2022 which will be effective from 1st of april 2020 So under this new directions RBI has asked the regulated entities lending to the microfinance segment to ensure that the loans are collateral free and not linked with a lien on the borrower's deposit account so these regulated entities will also ensure repayment obligations are capped and there is no prepayment penalty okay so answer is RBI Now in the next slide we'll see some of the important things regarding RBI. First question says which bank has received RBI approval for international remittance businesses? So this bank is Fino Payments Bank. Okay. Next question according to the RBI's framework for a small value offline payment transactions conducted in the digital mode the upper limit for the offline payment transaction is dash and the total limit for a payment instrument is 2000 rupees so the upper limit for the offline payment transaction in this case is 200 rupees now recently which bank has been impaneled as agency bank by the rbi this bank is csb bank and csb bank was also in news because recently it got the rbi approval to appoint mr pralay mandal as the deputy md okay and he has been appointed for a period of 3 years now rbi has set the wma limit for october 2021 to march 2022 at dash what is wma it is ways and means advances and this limit is 50000 crore rupees fine now which scheduled commercial banks have recently been permitted by rbi to act as the agency bank for the government this bank is scheduled a small finance bank and some other banks which have been impaneled as agency bank are bandhan bank indusit bank etc now which bank was recently recognized as a scheduled bank by the rbi so recently paytm payments bank limited has been recognized as a scheduled bank by the rbi means it has been included in the second schedule of rbi act 1934 basically a bank has to fulfill certain criteria to get itself included in the second schedule of rbi for example the dtl means demand and time liabilities should not be less than 750 crore rupees continuously for one year okay and what is demand and time liabilities basically it is the amount that has been collected through deposits and next is crar means capital to risk weighted asset ratio which is used to protect the depositors should be at least 12% okay then gross npa should be less than 5% npa stands for non performing asset and it should comply with the statutory liquidity ratio and the cash reserve ratio so these are some of the conditions which a bank has to fulfill before entering into the second schedule of rbi fine the last question says Which urban cooperative bank has recently been subjected to the RBI restrictions under Section 35A 
read with section 56 of the Banking Regulation Act. This bank is Nagar Urban Cooperative Bank. Okay. Now question number two, which country is the largest importer of arms globally as per the CIPRI's trends in international arms transfers 2021 report? First of all, what does CIPRI stands for? Stockholm International Peace Research Institute and it recently it has released the trends in international arms transfer 2021 report. So as per this report, India remains the largest importer of arms globally and most of the India's defense imports come from the country Russia. So India has been pushing for indigenous development in the defense equipment and has allotted 68% of the capital budget for financial year 2022 to 23 for the domestic manufacturing industries. Okay, so correct answer is India. Now let's see some of the important reports. Question number one, which institution has released a report titled as gold mining in India? So this report has been published by World Gold Council. Now next is, what is the rank of India in the Liberal Democracy Index of VDEM Democracy Report 2022? We have done it many a times. Answer is 93rd. Now as per the WII's recent report, which tiger reserve has more tiger density above its carrying capacity? So this tiger reserve is Sundarban from the West Bengal. Next is, as per a recent report, what is the cumulative solar installed capacity in India as on December 2021? So right now we have 49 gigawatt solar installed capacity in India. Now according to the latest Huron India Wealth Report 2021, the number of dollar millionaire household in India increased by dash percent to 4,58,000 households in 2021. So the dollar millionaire households in India have been increased by 11%. As per the State Bank of India's EcoRap report, India's GDP growth to be at dash percent for financial year 2022. So SBI has predicted India's GDP growth to be at 8.8% for this financial year. Now which fintech company has the highest digital payments penetration according to the Comscore report? This is Paytm. Okay. Next question, which day has been declared by the United Nations as the International Day to Combat Islamophobia? So the United Nations General Assembly has approved a resolution setting 15th of March as the International Day to Combat Islamophobia. So this resolution was adopted by consensus by the United Nations and co-sponsored by 55 mainly Muslim countries and it emphasizes the right to freedom of religion and belief and recalls a 1981 resolution that calls for the elimination of all forms of intolerance and of discrimination based on religion or belief. Okay. Now in the next slide, we'll see some of the important days and themes. First question says, remove laws that harm, create laws that empower is the theme of which day that is celebrated on 1st of March. So we observe zero discrimination day on 1st of March and the theme for this year was remove laws that harm, create laws that empower. Now recently the FIGI has taken initiatives in launching which day which will be celebrated on February 11th. So now every year 11th of February would be observed as anti-smoking day. Okay. Now which day is the national startup day recognized? We celebrate national startup day on 16th of January. Now which day will be celebrated as the National Doctors Day? It is 1st of June. International Day of Awareness on Food Loss and Waste Reduction is observed on which day? We observe this day on September 29. Seafarers at the core of shipping's future is the theme of which day that is celebrated on 30th of September. So till the time 30th September would come again, you have to remember this particular theme which is for 2021. So 30th of September is celebrated as World Maritime Day. And waterways in our communities is the theme of which day celebrated on 4th Sunday of September. So every year 4th Sunday of September is celebrated as World River Day. Okay. 
Now next question. Right to profess, practice and propagate religion is entitled under which article of the Indian Constitution? So article 25 provides the fundamental right of freedom of conscience and free profession, practice and propagation of religion to all the persons. And the High Court of Karnataka dismissed petitions filed by a group of Muslim girls seeking permission to wear hijab in the classrooms. So the government can interfere on essential religious practices on basically three grounds under Article 25 Clause 1, which are these public order, morality and health. Fine. Now we'll see some of the questions regarding constitution of different countries. First is, Constitution Scheduled Tribes Order Amendment Bill was recently presented to include the certain tribes in which state. This state is Tripura. Second question, what does Article 176 Clause 1 of the Constitution of India deal with? So in this, it says that governor address in both the houses of state. Okay, and talking about governor, do remember that this position is the nominal executive head of the state and Indian president appoints governor for each state. Also there is no direct election for the post of governor and government holds the office under the pleasure of the president. Right? Now article 275 of the constitution is associated with which issue? So it talks about grants from the union to the certain states. Okay? And why it was in news? Because recently Center has released 2,221 crore rupees to the states Bihar, Karnataka and the West Bengal for providing grants to the rural local bodies. Right? Now, the citizen is the constitution literacy campaign held in which district? This district is Kola, which lies in Kerala. And the motive of the citizen is to make every person their constitution aware. Okay. Now, which South American country is drafting a new constitution? This is Chile. When is the constitution day celebrated every year? We celebrate constitution day on 26th of November because on this day we adopted our constitution although it came into effect on 26th of January. Which article of the Indian constitution gives parliament the power to make laws and repeal laws? So, parliament can do so under article 245 right the next question the mh17 crash which was making news recently happened in which particular country so basically russia is alleged to have a role in the donning of malaysia airlines flight mh17 that crashed in eastern ukraine's donetsk region in the year 2014 when crimea was annexed by the russian forces so recently what happened is Amidst the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Australia and Netherlands are set to launch a new legal case against Russia regarding this MH17 crash. Fine. Now, few questions regarding Ukraine. First question is, which technology company has launched air raid alert system on Android phones in Ukraine? This has been launched by the tech giant Google. So, all payment services on YouTube, Superchat, Merchandise, along with the Google Play Store have been suspended by Google and also the company has paused all types of advertisement there in Russia. Now, which institution adopted the resolution titled as Aggression Against Ukraine? This is United Nations General Assembly. So, it is one of the six principal organs of United Nations. And who is the current head? Mr. Abdullah Shahid. Next is Ukraine shares border with how many European Union member states? So it shares border with four EU member states. Okay. Basically, Ukraine has Russia in its east and northeast. It has the country Belarus to its north. Then it has three countries in its west, which are these Poland, Slovakia and Hungary. And in the south part, two countries are there, Romania and Moldova. Okay. Now, what is the name of the initiative launched by India to bring back the Indians stranded in Ukraine? So, Indian government has launched an operation named as Operation Ganga to take out the Indians back from the Ukraine. Now, which country passed a resolution to show support to Ukraine?
condemning Russian military aggression. This country is USA. And which isthmus connects the Crimean Peninsula to the Ukraine? This is isthmus of Perekop. Okay. Next question. Which global association proposed the world's first carbon tariff? So the European Union proposed the world's first carbon tariff on imports of steel, cement, fertilizers, aluminium and electricity. Why? To protect the European industries. So European Union countries have recently backed the association plan to impose a world first carbon dioxide emissions tariff on imports of polluting goods. Okay. Now in the next slide we will talk about some carbon related problems and carbon related current issues. First question, which institution organized the National Innovation Conclave on Low Carbon Technologies? This has been organized by Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Now as per a recent study, which national park of India is releasing more carbon than it is absorbing? This is Kaziranga National Park. Where does it lie? It is in the state of Assam. Can you tell me how many national parks are there in the state of Assam? Then the National Center of Excellence in Carbon Capture and Utilization has been established at which institution? It has been established at IIT Bombay. What is the name of the carbon rich diamond shaped near earth asteroid recently seen in the news? So this asteroid was named as Ryugu. How many airports have received international recognition for reducing the carbon emission level as per the standards set by ACI grading. So four airports have been received international recognition for reducing their carbon emission level. Which country is the largest emitter of carbon dioxide on a per capita basis among G20 countries? This country is Saudi Arabia. And which organization has become the country's first steel company to commission a carbon capture plant? This is Tata Steel. Okay, next question, a Guinness world record for fastest time to travel to all the metro stations in city was created in which metro network? So a Delhi Metro Rail Corporation employee, Mr. Praful Singh has created Guinness world records for recording the fastest time to travel to all the metro stations in the city. And this makes him the first person in the world to travel to all 254 stations of the city covering 348 kilometers in just 16 hours and 2 minutes. Okay, so answer is Delhi Metro. Now coming to the question part, the Prime Minister recently inaugurated the metro project of which city? Answer is Pune. By the end of the year 2022, the Karnataka state government has planned how many kilometers of route addition to the existing Bangalore metro operation. So the Karnataka state government has decided to add 36 kilometers route to the existing Bangalore metro operations. Now which is the first city in India to have a water metro project? This is Kochi. Which city has the longest metro rail network in the world? It is Shanghai. Now which metro rail project was inaugurated recently that uses regenerative braking technology? It is Kanpur Metro Rail Project. Then the Agra Metro Project is to be built with the aid of which institution? So European Investment Bank would help to build our Agra Metro Project. India signed a loan agreement with which bank for Surat Metro Rail Project? Answer is KFW. Now by which year the Indian Railways will launch India's first underwater metro? Very important question. So the underwater metro would be launched by the end of 2022. Next question, which state is placed at the top spot in the Scotch state of governance ranking? So Andhra Pradesh has retained its top spot in the Scotch state of governance ranking for the second consecutive year. And the Scotch state of governance 2021 document highlighted that Andhra Pradesh has been a star for the fourth year in a row and it is also the only state from South India to have been given the star ratings in 2021. Okay. Now let's come to the question slide. Which Indian bank has been awarded IFR Asia's Asian Bank of the Year? 
आई डोंट नो हाउ मेनी टाइम्स हैव टोल्ड यू दिस आंसर इज एक्सिस बैंक सिंगर लता मंगेशकर हु रिसेंटली पास अवे वॉज अवॉर्डेड द भारत रत्न इन विच ईयर सो शी वॉज अवॉर्डेड द भारत रत्न इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड वन ऑल्सो शी रिसीव दादा साहेब फालके अवॉर्ड इन द ईयर नाइनटीन नाइनटीन पद्मभूषण इन द ईयर नाइनटीन सिक्सटी नाइन एंड देन also recently bengali singer sandhya mukherjee has passed away and why she is important because she had recently refused to accept the padma awards from the central government that was awarded in january 2022 now can you tell me the name of three personalities who have refused to accept the padma awards this year do let me know in the comments now prime minister's excellence award is being awarded for which sector it is given for it is given in the field of public administration in which year jhulan goswami was awarded the sports person of the year honor at the kolkata sports journalist club so she was awarded this in the year 2019 now why we have taken this question because jhulan goswami was in news as she has created the history and she becomes the first woman bowler to claim 250 wickets in the odis right so this question also becomes important now who was the first indian actress awarded in an international film festival this is suchitra sen okay now question number 9 bhagwant man sworn in as the chief minister of which indian state so aam aadmi party leader bhagwant man recently assumed office as the 18th chief minister of punjab at the state civil secretariat in the chandigarh so he took oath as the 18th chief minister of punjab at kahatar kalan which is the ancestral village of freedom fighter bhagat singh okay now coming to the questions ziomara castro has been sworn in as the first female president of which country so she is the first female president of the country honduras daniel ortega sworn in as which country's president for his fourth consecutive term so he is the president of the country nicaragua next is abe ahmed has been sworn in as the prime minister of which country answer is ethiopia who has been sworn in as the chief minister of gujarat everyone knows mr bhupendra patel now who has been sworn in as the governor of manipur ganga prasad B S Bomai has been sworn in as the Chief Minister of which state? Answer is Karnataka. Bashar Al Assad has been sworn in as the President of which country for the fourth time? So he is now the President of Syria. Sheikh Bahadur Deoba has been sworn in as the Prime Minister of which country? Answer is Nepal. Now last is Guillermo Lasso, who was in the news recently, was sworn in as the President of which country? answer is ecuador okay now coming to last question which indian city is the host of 44th world chess olympiad in 2022 so the 44th world chess olympiad will be organized in chennai and it is a biennial team event in which teams from 190 countries compete so this is the second major global event of the sport to be held in india after the world championship match in the year 2000 13 so this event was previously scheduled in russia and has been moved out after its invasion of ukraine okay now let's see some of the important questions regarding chess first question is which city is the host of senior national chess championship 2022 answer is kanpur nodir bek abdul satrov who is the youngest ever world rapid chess champion is from which country he belong to uzbekistan Which chess player won the FIDE World Championship? Very famous, Magnus Carlsen. From which country he belonged to? Norway. Now, which country won the FIDE World Women Team Chess title at Spain in 2021? Answer is Russia. Now, recently, who has become India's 70th Grandmaster in chess? This is Raja Ritwik. Actually, you have to remember all four. Seventieth Grand Master is Raja Ritwik. Seventy-first Grand Master is Sankal Gupta. Seventy-second is Mitra Bhag Guha, and the latest and the seventy-third Grand Master of India is Bharat Subramanian. Okay, so you have to remember all these. 
Last question says, who Yifan, who won the 2021 Women's Speed Chess Championship is from which country? So she belonged to China. Okay. Now let's start with today's quiz. Here on the slide, you can see five questions which have been taken from the past two, three days current affairs. Pause the video and try to solve each of these questions. And at the end of the lecture, do not forget to share your scores in the comment section. So please be honest and do not cheat with yourself. So that's it for today. I hope you have liked this session. These were the important news and events from today. And we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. And please do not forget to subscribe to GK Today. With this, Minusat Sana signing off.